Welcome everybody, this is Wargamer Sean. I'm coming at you today. Um, a couple things. Uh, I got, uh, I had, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I had um, backed a Kickstarter for um, a, a video game for Battletech, trying to bring the classic Battletech back. And I had kind of backed it to a certain level and I got a, uh, like some swag, uh, like a jacket and I actually got a cap. Um, it says Battletech and has the Federated Sons on it. I, I was able to choose which faction from a list of factions. It wasn't like all inclusive, but I chose Federated Sons. I'd always kind of like them the best. Um, so I'll be wearing that today. It's a little wrinkled, but uh, that's the cap. I think it's pretty nice. Um, I'm going to do a Codex review of Codex Gene Stealer Cults. I'm very excited about it. Um, since Boy, second edition, we haven't seen them. I mean, they incorporated Gene Steelers into the Tyranid Codex, uh, and um, we haven't seen them since. So it's, I'm kind of excited. Like, there's some things that are frustrating about 40K as far as the way the game and the shenanigans and everything has gone. But I'm, I'm really excited, um, you know, since uh, since 7th edition, they've started bringing in armies that have been kind of out of the loop for a while. Um you know, they brought Harlequins back. Um, they added Cult Mechanicus and Skatari. I think they should have just been one codex, in my opinion. But, you know, they'd always talked about them. They'd always been in the lore, but they hadn't really ever had written, you know, rules. Um, they did have them in 30K before uh, they introduced them in 40K. But I, you know, I was surprised to see that. And I was very happy to see the Harlequins come back and get their own codex. And I'm very happy to see the Gene Stealers come back. Um... We'll jump into it. Um, I'll, I'll split this up into different videos because there's a lot to cover. Um, the first thing, I'll just kind of go through some of their special rules. Um, now, um, they have uh, their own special rules. And um, they're, the, the cool thing, I'm actually really excited that, um, that Games Workshop did this. They um, did Faction Allies... Um, that they are allies of convenience with Tyranids and Astra Militarum. And, and it, when you think about it fluff-wise, it kind of makes sense because, uh, you know, you're they're kind of taking over a hive world and or a world and infiltrating the city and the government. So it would make sense that they could kind of take over um, Astra Militarum forces there and it may even command them, but they might not know who they're working for. So I, I like that they did that. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, and uh, they um, have one special rule that's called unquestion excuse me unquestioning loyalty. A model with this special rule automatically passes lookout sir, so they don't have to roll for it, and can even make lookout sir when attempting to fight in a challenge. So <coughs> excuse me. Um, so if you're in a challenge and you don't want to take a wound, you can bring in you know a little you know average Joe nobody here, cultist or something, and just kill them off, um, even in a challenge, which is pretty amazing, especially since um, I think they kind of did that because um, the HQs in this game, although two of them can fight in close combat decent, they're, they're not necessarily beat sticks and they're not necessarily survival. If they don't have invuln saves, they don't have you know, anything better than four or five up. So I think it's kind of good that they gave that to them. Um, they also have a rule called return to the shadows and instead of moving in your movement phase, any unit with a special rule that is not within six inches of enemy models can be removed from the battlefield and placed into ongoing reserve. A unit cannot return to the shadows in the same turn it arrives from reserves or ongoing reserves and cannot do so while embarked on a vehicle. Um, this is also kind of a neat little special rule. It's kind of like them kind of crawling back into the shadows and kind of creeping back up and you know kind of you know coming back in the you know in the hive city yeah it's kind of cool it's kind of neat rule it kind of helps them um cult ambush uh units with a special rule that that infiltrate or that arrive via reserve or ongoing reserve can choose to roll the cult ambush table opposite um, instead of deploying or arriving via reserves normally unless otherwise specified ambushing units move onto the table as described for other reserves and cannot move any further during the movement phase 
of the turn they deploy or arrive on the battlefield. Units cannot use the called ambush special rule while they are embarked inside a transport. Once again, it's kind of a way for them to kind of get like kind of creeping out of like hiding spots and holes. Like they're just think of them as a big infestation that they're trying to get rid of. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. Um, we'll kind of go over the, the cult ambush rules right now because we just mentioned them. Um, so when you're going to arrive via cult ambush, you roll a D6 and consult the chart. Um, so it's still kind of random. It's kind of like it's a little orky <laughs> in some degree. I know I've heard some people complain about how, you know, some of these rules or some of these psychic powers which we're going to are really great or really broken. And I think you have to, anytime you have a special rule, you have to take the context of the army that it's in. Um, and also, you got to remember that psychic powers and this cult ambush table, it's random. So you have to roll for it. It's not a guarantee, um, which also makes it a bit of a risk for the player that's playing this army. And also when you kind of look, and we'll go back and do a review of the army, but this army is cheap in most aspects, but it's not really survivable. It's it's more meant to just throw masses and bodies um, and just, you know, almost sacrifice. Almost, I mean, a little, you know, correlation at World War II with the Russians against the, the Nazis. Um, you know, it's like, here, have a rifle, go fight, you know, I mean... Um, you're just trying to like overwhelm them with mass bodies. Um, so, um, cult ambush. Um, if you roll a one, uh, cult reinforcements come on the table from your own board edge. So it's like they just come on a reserves normally. Um, you know, not a big deal there. Um, two encircling foe, uh, roll a d6 on a one or two. The ambushing unit comes in from the table edge to your left. Three to four, they come into your right. And five to six, you choose. I mean, that's just like coming out of reserve and, you know, outflanking, basically. Um, three, lying in wait. Set up the ambush unit anywhere on the table that is more than nine inches away from the enemy unit. You can alternately set up the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than six inches away from an enemy unit that they can't draw a line of sight from. So out of sight. It's kind of like um, infiltrating, but with better range basically instead of you know 12 inches and 18 inches it's it's nine inches and six inches once again i mean not super op in, in my opinion um for a perfect ambush uh set up the ambush unit anywhere on the table that is more than six inches away from an enemy unit all right cool um five deadly trap um set up the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than six inches away from an enemy model after placing the ambushing unit, you can immediately make a bonus shooting attack. Um, this does not prevent um, the, the, the unit from shooting the shooting phase, and it doesn't prevent them from um, shooting. I think it can shoot a different target as well. Um, the bonus shooting attacks cannot cause morale checks. However, they can cause pinning checks. Um, they do have pinning checks, sorry. So they can pin, but they can't make them fall back. Um, if the ammunition unit does not have any ranged weapon, it can choose to run instead um, in the moving phase. Uh, six, they come from below. Uh, set up the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than three inches away from the enemy unit. Unlike units that infiltrate and arrive via reserves, the ambushing unit can charge in the first turn or the turn they arrive from reserve. So that's the big one that people are complaining about. It's like, oh my gosh, they can come within three inches and charge in the charge phase true they can um I just think of a couple things though um to kind of put that in perspective if you end up facing tau and you're like oh my god you're right in their face and they can't take close combat well two things one is um most tau players at least myself and a lot of tau players play uh with uh, basically interceptor special rule so as soon as you place those guys and there's let's say three inches away from something they're going to blast the crap out of it, anything with Interceptor. So it's probably going to die, be a dead unit um, anyway. So you can still stop them from getting to your front line. Um, two, um, you know, there's the recent, and I haven't reviewed it yet, and I apologize, I'm behind on reviews, but uh, there's the Angels, um, one that's the Blood Angels new supplement part. It's kind of the answer to Traitor's Hate. And they have a formation where Dante and you know, his sanguinary guard come down and they deep strike 
Dante's unit doesn't deep doesn't mishap or and then the other ones get d6 and they can re-roll it instead of 2d6 so and they can charge the first turn they come down so I think that's with a two up save and with a pretty nasty little Lord of War that's far scarier than anything that this can do and plus it's random you have to roll a six so it's not guaranteed and you might get a you might get that result on a unit that's a bunch of like shooty cultists that's don't really want to charge <laughs> um so once again take it in perspective i don't think it's that you know big of a deal but you know it is good you know it does help them i think this army i think gw got that they needed help when they released the um the box game and they kind of had the rules for the guys that were in the box i think they realized that they weren't that good i mean especially the shooting like i, I played a game a test game that I have on here you can look at, which is against Deathwing, which is mainly Terminators. And they did really great against them, but I had Tyranids with them too. But um, I did another game, and I, I don't think I put it up yet, but there – maybe I did. Um, that's against Imperial Guard, and, you know, with orders and ignoring cover and stuff like that, they just died by the droves. I couldn't even get close to them. Um, so, you know, perspective. Um, we'll go over the Warlord traits next. Um, if you roll on the um, – the gene stealer cult warlord trait um they have shadow stalker which is your warlord has a stealth special rule two is focus of adoration friendly units of gene stealer cult faction that have counterattack they have counterattack rule other than than 12 inches of the warlord it's pretty good uh wall creeper your warlord has moved through cover in addition your warlord has um his unit never suffer the penalty to initiative while charging through terrain also another good one, especially since most of the time it's probably going to be, you know, Papa Gene Stealer there that's going to be your your warlord, um, the Patriarch. So um, number four is Born Survivor. Your warlord has It Will Not Die special rule. It's okay. Um, Alien Majesty is number five. All models in your warlord's attachment um, can use his leadership in place of their own. That's actually pretty good. Uh, ambush Leader, number six. When using Cult Ambush Special Rule, your Warlord in the unit he has joined. Do not roll on the Cult Ambush table. You just choose the results. Also, that's that's really good because that takes away the randomness of the Cult Ambush. But once again, it's just one unit and the Warlord. So, And, I mean, the thing to remember, too, is if, let's say, um, they get on the unit they want and they smash face, the next turn, they're going to get shot up pretty bad. <laughs> Probably die. So... It, it depends, you know, you got to look at the whole thing for the game. Um, as far as, I think we'll go through some of the special things. Well, maybe we'll go through. One thing that I'm kind of excited about, um, they didn't with the Harlequins. The Harlequins had access to it. Well, everybody did back in Rogue Trader. But they actually brought web weapons back. So they have web pistols and a Weber gun, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, they brought that back uh, in, in this. Um, their web pistol is 12 inch range. Uh, Weber is 16 inches. Um, their blast weapons, and they have the cocoon special rule. The web pistol is th strength three. Um, Weber is strength four. Um, so the AP value of the wound caused by this weapon is equal to the current strength characteristic of the model it is allocated to. For example, if the wound from a web weapon was allocated to a space marine, which has strength four, that wound is resolved at AP4. Against vehicles or models with strength 7 or more, it is AP dash. So if you're really strong or you're a vehicle, it, it doesn't care. Um, it's definitely different rules from the old web weapons. The old web, web, web weapons were pretty devastating. It didn't right out kill you, but if you tried to escape, it would basically kind of cut you. Um, and it could stop vehicles, like kind of log, kind of almost in a way kind of immobilize them so they've changed the rules on it i think made it simpler but i think it's fair um you know if you're a strength two or strength three you're probably going to get cut up pretty bad by the ap of this weapon so you're probably going to die versus if you start getting stronger like strength four or strength five you're probably going to get your armor save and do okay so i think it's kind of cool um i think um i'll stop here and we'll we'll start the next video on the hqs and probably just the HQs because there's four HQs. Although the the weird thing is is that the HQs in this you can't repeat any of them. So they're even though they're kind of characters, they're in a way special characters. So you can't uh, take another one of them. Um, so 
Um, you have to think about that when you're building your army too. Oh, actually, I apologize. I will <laughs> go through the, the they kind of got their own Decurian type style. Um, so we might as well go through that quick. Now the special rules for this are interesting. Um, so the restrictions, um, you have to take one um, basic core and one auxiliary um, to make it. And so um, the command benefits are the cult father. If you choose a patriarch from this attachment, he can reroll warlord traits on the gene stealer cult table. Uh, uprising generations in the making. All non-vehicle units in the attachment have that have infiltrate, or sorry, they have the infiltrate special rule, so they get it even if they don't have it. Um, and uh, if they already have infiltrate, they get the shrouded special rule during the first game turn. Um, in addition, so it's just the first game turn. In addition, you can add one to your reserve rolls while your opponent subtracts one from their reserve rolls. Um, numbers beyond counting. Each time a unit from detachment arrives from ongoing reserve, it is reinforced, and you can return D6 models to the unit that were slain previously in the battle. So if you lost guys, you can return D6. Um, now, when I initially read this, I thought, oh, you just get to add D6 guys. That's amazing. But it's only the ones that are slain. So if you have a unit of so many, if you lost one guy, you can only get one guy back. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> and the um, the co or the command, you can have zero to three, and uh, one of them is the Lords of the Cult, which is one Patriarch, Magus, uh, Primus, or Acolyte, Iconworn, or um, Patriarch. So it's one of any of those. Uh, the first curse is another command, and that's the Patriarch in a unit of pure stained gene stealers. And then the Brood Coven is another one, which is one Patriarch, one Magus, one Primus. They form their own unit, and they get special rules that, that kind of benefit themselves, or they can that unit can join another unit, but they have to stay together. Um, but anyway, um, we'll go through uh, some more of this later, and in the next video we'll start with the HQ section and... Until next time, keep on wargaming, guys, and take care. I'll be at you soon. Goodbye, you sexy motherfucker.